Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Oddities video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one yet again based on one of your new suggestions. This one having to do with a strange and bizarre person, if you could even call him that, that had some World War II myths associated with them. In fact, this is something that has very little info that I could find on this person. I was even going to place it within a mixtape, but then I thought to myself, no, let me go ahead and I'll separate it, keep it in its own individual video. Plus, it eerily parallels another video that I talked about a few years back. More on that here in a minute. But you're looking at a picture, a representation of this person. It has a very unique name too, and it's known as Parak. More on that here as well in just a moment as to the meanings of its name. So let's go ahead and let's talk about this very, very brief but unique individual. And then uh, you'll be able to see how it eerily parallels the other party that I'm going to talk about here as well. But yeah, let's go ahead and let's talk about Parak. So Parak. Essentially, it means spring, and that's because it comes from uh, Czechoslovakia, like in other words, the translation associated there. It could also mean spring man, or it could also mean springer. And the reason for this is because the actions associated with this individual all involve its incredible leaping skills. That's essentially why it's called that. But first, I wanted to talk about the other cryptid, the one that eerily parallels very same sort of actions. It was called the Spring Hill Jack. This was a creature or some type of being or even a person that was able to terrify like a bunch of people way back when like in London and other parts of that that area there. And I'm going to include the link from below in case you haven't had a chance to see that video. Highly recommend doing so. It's gotten a good number of views and people still see it to this day. But it'll give you a chance to compare that entity with the one that I'm going to talk about here. But again, check out that link uh, below for the Spring Hill Jack. But back to Parak. So yes, it is from Czechoslovakia, whatever this person was, and it ties into, as I mentioned a moment ago, World War II myths. This is why. It turns out this was a person, a being, something that was starting to quote-unquote terrorize individuals there in Czechoslovakia, specifically in the city of Prague during a German occupation. This was World War II we don't know the exact dates, but it would have been somewhere around 1939, 1940, maybe even up to 1942 that this person all of a sudden sprung out. No pun intended. They were able to come out in those areas there and startle passengers, startle passersby as well. The idea was this. Here was this person, a humanoid person, for all intents and purposes, it probably is it's just a man, but there it was leaping out of the blue and then startling anyone that it came into contact with, and then based on other reports on the extreme end, even harming people to the point that it had like some kind of knives or some kind of sharp points associated with its hands. And it would start terrorizing people, it would start slicing them, um, apparently had some hand-to-hand -hand combat as well. People that saw it move, saw it move with very, very fluid motion, so it had great acrobatic skills as well, and it was able to blend in to the environment very well too. So it had a great stealth mode as well, and it was doing all of this all of a sudden, just out of the blue there in Prague during that World War II area. And then specifically, at one point, it was doing this almost as, as a form of scaring people. People were being intimidated by this person. However, they were doing it. They were easily escaping. So it allowed this Parak to be able to do it on a continuous basis. So much so that actually people working the night shifts there... And at that time, with it being World War II, there was a lot of weapon factories around that were just running nonstop. This was the big world war, right? So there was a lot of places that are running, especially at the nighttime, and there was a lot of workers that had to go there. And when that happened and they were running into this thing, this Parak, they were actually stopping going out there. Like they wanted to refuse to go to work and then in turn impacted these weapons factories. I mean, that's to the point that, these, that this being was causing so many of these particular deeds. But where things took a turn was this. 
from doing that to innocent people, it then started targeting more the lines of German Nazis. So as it turns out, in that area in Prague, that's when uh, Germany started invading that location. And then they had uh, several people out there, Nazis and others that were working on some of those factories. And then it was severely impacting whoever this Parak was, was severely impacting their production. So it would basically do the same thing, but instead of doing it towards individuals, innocent ones, it was doing it now, all of a sudden to these Germans. And just like that, it went from being like a scary, almost demonic-like being, very menacing, to now being a superhero. Instead of being their boogeyman, like against them, it was now against those Germans. And so when that happened, people's uh, mindset changed with regards to this Parak. He became almost like a super superhero of sorts. But just like that, as quickly as he leapt in, all of a sudden he was gone. Who knows if that had to do with World War II ending or maybe even before that time period as well. But yeah, he was basically able to do all this, jump in, and his feats, by the way, included the ability for doing superhuman jumps. People stated that he was able to jump and leap over entire trains as well. And people that saw this stated that it was because of these boots. Whatever he had in terms of those boots, whatever equipment they were, allowed him to be able to use that to then do these superhuman type leaps. But as quickly as he was there, he was also gone. All of a sudden, he was nowhere around. Um, he went from targeting these innocents to targeting these Nazis, killing them, slicing their throats and so on. And then he was nowhere to be found afterward. But his impact definitely stayed afterward. In fact, to this very day, obviously, I'm talking about him now. And obviously, he was suggested Parak still remains a mysterious shadow, a hero of sorts that was there within that very, very short time period um, and then left just as quickly. Interestingly enough, police, I guess, were involved. Here's where the info becomes very brief, though. Nobody has any reports like there's no official police documents or anything else like an investigation that showcases what they were doing to try to find uh, this this guy, whoever this was, this Parak. So unless they purposely did not do that because they didn't have much evidence to start investigations, or it could be another thing where this was truly more on the lines of an urban legend, just something that Nobody really saw in person, but instead they heard from a friend of a friend type thing. That's where and why these the, the, there's no official investigation. So pretty much it just remains more on the lines of, like I mentioned a moment ago, some type of boogeyman, somebody that was suddenly out there in the shadows and then they were absolutely gone afterward. Interesting stuff. No, again, it really parallels a lot of the info that I mentioned in some of my past videos with that spring heel jack but if anybody has any more info anything else i might have missed then please post those comments below what about those of you in czechoslovakia maybe those of you there in prague if anybody has more info on the local side i'd love to hear what your thoughts are what do you guys think too is this somebody that was truly a person somebody that however they had it had some kind of advanced technology with those boots and was able to do all of these acts and then just leap abound afterward? Or was it something else? Theories also include that this could have been somebody along the lines of an extraterrestrial or more on the paranormal, supernatural side, something along the lines of a demon or ghost. Who knows? But I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this too. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.